Uh, hi, Krishna. Uh, so I don't have a, a PPT or anything, so maybe. Okay, so just to give you a little bit about my background, uh, the last time I worked with Hadoop, we worked extensively with Hadoop at uh, Pool Iris, a uh, startup I worked in in the US before I moved uh, to India. Uh, but that was 2010, so in technology, I think smoke this fast, take anything that I say with you know, handfuls of salt. Uh, but I'd like to share uh, some experiences uh, for us on why we moved to Hadoop, uh, as well as uh, what were some of our learnings from it. And then I guess there's going to be a lot of Q&A anyway, so you guys can dig deeper, ask me deeper questions at any point of time. I was more on the product side, uh, but you know, in big data, there's only as much you can do without being technical. Uh, so we did a lot on the engineering uh, side as well. So I'd be happy to go on either side of those product or uh, engineering. Um, uh, so maybe I'll start off with why we moved to Hadoop, and uh, then maybe if you have any uh, specific questions, you can ask me later. And I'll also uh, share some of our learnings. Uh, so we initially had, so Coolinus is a consumer uh, internet company, we make browser plugins, we used to make browser plugins, now do many things, uh, that you know you can install on your browser and then it you know gives you a three-dimensional view on Google searches and so on. Uh, we had a lot of downloads coming in from uh, you know partners like Mozilla, uh, add-ons, so we, you know, you, we basically list ourselves in a number of directories and we would get um, on an average of 100 to 200,000 downloads every single day. These are 200,000 clients being installed, right? 100 to 200,000 clients being installed, and each one of these clients would send back a lot of data. Um, so, uh, as as most uh, uh, as in most cases, we started out with MySQL as a solution. And actually speaking, a MySQL is usually the right solution 99.9999999% of the times. <laughs> and that remaining percentage is usually you who are doing something wrong and really not the fault of MySQL. Uh, right? But there were some very specific reasons uh, why we had to choose Hadoop. And I somehow don't like the idea of tying big data one is to one with Hadoop because a lot of use cases for Hadoop, but Hadoop becomes useful even if you don't have big data. And I want to talk a little bit about that towards the uh, um, so why do we move to Hadoop? So MySQL is awesome uh, for web analytics and uh, uh, you know, and you know all kinds of analytics. But when you have clients, right? And we have clients across multiple uh, operating systems, browsers, different browsers. So since we are a client, we have to uh, you know have a separate uh, client for Chrome, for Safari, for Firefox, for IE with each of those you know, browser idiosyncrasies, and then we had Android applications, iPhone applications, Flash clients, website, uh, embeddable and non-embeddable that is installable and so on. And uh, we had engineering teams that would move and iterate on these products at a very rapid rate. So what does that mean? First of all, we're getting lots of downloads, which means a lot of data coming in. But MySQL can easily handle that. Right? But then you say on the product team, you want to start doing analysis on what is working, what's not working, what part of your usage is being driven by some specific feature in a specific product. And these are not queries you can easily express as SQL statements, right? Like if you want to find out how many impressions is uh, being served, then you know, a single sum query you know, from SQL will easily tell you that. MySQL is awesome at telling you that. But if you want to sort of find out, okay, of the 1 million users that use my product today, how many of those are using it from that particular month, and which one of those are using it because they use the specific feature? Try writing an SQL query for that. Incredibly hard, right? Um, and uh, the second thing is that uh, you know you you would have uh, schema changes happening very 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 often. I mean, we we had a suite of uh, you know seven or eight products. I mean, because each one of these clients has some differences, right? Because it's a C plus uh, plus client that's running on. It's not like JavaScript or and even JavaScript you have any difference. So, uh, given that there's a lot of schema uh, changes happening, we have to we very soon realize that having uh, the, the, you know the typical RDBM structure of tables and so on won't really work that well, especially because we want to run a lot of ad hoc queries later on, and also some queries are being needed on a real time basis, like time series data. And so then we move to protocol buffers. But once you move to protocol buffers, because you know it, it helps you with uh, the, you know, uh, divisioning your data structure, whatever that you use to store your data, uh, then uh, obviously MySQL became a lesser and lesser fit. So one, one key takeaway, uh, you know, that I like to share is that you know, uh, on Dore's side, on the side, you notice that you know he listed a number of use cases for using uh, big data solutions or uh, you know things like Hadoop and so on. 
and on that slide, if you know, there were, there were only really two rows out of, out of 15 or so that you would even think of putting in a database, right? Like banking transaction data, yeah, sure, you can find some way to fit that into a table. But what, what would you do when you're analyzing, you know, X-ray scans? Or what would you do when you're analyzing audio files? Or when you're uh, analyzing videos? Or, you know, analyzing textual, uh, you know, documents, doc, PDFs, and so on? These are not things that you would traditionally dump into a database. So uh, you know, that's actually one great use case where Hadoop comes in, where it helps you, uh, you know, it provides a more general framework where you can work with those kinds of formats, even if you don't have like petabytes of data. Um, and uh, so that was one of the reasons for us moving to Hadoop. Um, uh, the other uh, reason of, of moving to Hadoop uh, was that Hadoop was the only solution uh, that was kind of stable. Like, we were using it back 2000, I think we started experimenting with it early 2009 and, and then moved to it uh, six months later once we were fairly confident that it would work. Um, and uh, it was sort of the only stable uh, solution that would let us, uh, you know, uh, that would uh, enable us to do the kind of ad hoc uh, querying that we wanted to do as well as enable us then to run sort of a daily job that would dump data we need, we need for time series and all of that into MySQL. So we, so it's usually a combination of SQL and Hadoop, it's usually kind of an either or. Uh, situation, right? So you use uh, SQL for storing a uh, data that you want to graph, uh, and you use Hadoop for ad hoc querying as well as generating data that gets fed into these tables. Um, so, what were some of our uh, lessons, uh, you know, moving uh, to Hadoop? Uh, it's honestly a lot more uh, pain than you realize uh, when you start off. Uh, it's, it's a lot better now because Hadoop itself is, a, is more stable and so on. But uh, what were some specific problems, right? The specific problems are that even though you have big data and big data solutions, the little details and the little problems don't go away, right? For example, uh, you know, if you have corrupt data, uh, right, uh, no matter what analysis you do with what tools, you're still going to get results that you can't use. Uh, it still doesn't, big data and big data solutions still don't prevent you from asking the wrong question to begin with. And then, you know, your entire, uh, you know, 1,000 node Hadoop cluster is now going to help you. Right. Uh, then you have, uh, and, and, and big data is not a solution for not understanding the basics of statistics. Right. There's a lot that you can do with sampling, and you know, and there's a lot of literature around how you do sampling correctly. There are obviously some cases where you can't use sampling, and you have to go fine grain. Like for example, uh, you know, in, in PayPal's case, they can't just sample you know 2,000 or 3,000 users if you have statistical confidence that these 3,000 users, whatever, right, are are fraudulent and everybody is an Indian, and so we have to ban India from our system. So there they have to go at a granular level, looking at each person's you know, transaction log and saying, is this guy uh, you know, a high risk or is he not? <coughs> Though they may use these aggregate statistics to inform that decision. Um, so and that's obviously one case. The other case is that you know, if you want to understand product usage at a user level, then obviously you, know, you can't sample. But for a lot of things, to find out, did this feature uh, really make an impact on our numbers? Uh, a lot of that can be done with just sampling, and you don't really need big data uh, to answer those questions. Um, and uh, one of the other takeaways uh, for us from the Hadoop experience is that um, you run into problems that you don't generally realize with SQL. Like, you know, how many of you have written an SQL query at least once at some point in time? Right? Uh, almost all of you, right? And how, how fast is the answer? But whether there's an error or not, you know instantly. With the Hadoop job, the way it works is, you know, I write a job, I kick off. Uh, the job, then I go for a run or something like that, or in some cases for our, for, for our, for especially one of our nightly jobs, so we would run a nightly cron job that would compute these things, it would take 5 hours to, uh, to finish computing that. And uh, like any other system, Hadoop also, uh, it has its fair share of downtime, you know, there's a thing called a name node, which is like the one thing that moves them all kind of thing, and if that goes down, you're going to have to help for some time, and you're going to have some downtime. There's no, maybe it's changed now, I don't think it has, but if it has changed, great. But back then, uh, there's this thing called secondary name node, except it's not really a secondary name node, it's just, uh, I don't want to, I don't know how technical uh, you know, I should get here, but basically think of it as you're going to have downtime. And if you have downtime, it's going to take you, uh, say, it takes us three days to you know, finish bringing the cluster back up, then uh, every single day's job is going to take five hours, so how do you catch up? those five days that you've left, right? Because you need to compute that particular day's thing as well as the previous five days that you've lost. And the company is not okay with not just saying we're not gonna process that because we have partners that we have to report data out to. In terms of, so these are problems that generally don't happen uh, often when you get results back very quickly. 
Um, so these are some of our uh, some of our learnings. Um, it, it's also uh, the other thing is that you know you don't, you, don't, you never know if this query or this job is going to succeed until it actually finishes running. So we would have errors where the job would take five hours, and in the fifth hour, in the last seventy eight percent or whatever the reduce phase. So if you know map reduce, there's a map phase and there's a there's a lot of things that goes in between, and then there's a reduce phase. It, it would stop at seventy eight percent of the reduce phase, which means that's like four hours fifty five minutes. And then it says, uh, you know, uh, uh, out of memory, and then it's going to, and then you like you have reset it back, uh, you know, to, to step one, and that happens a lot. Um, so these are these are some of um, our takeaways. Hadoop is not necessarily one on one with big data. You can use Hadoop for a lot of use cases uh, that makes your job easier to put some uh, systems on top of, even if you're not dealing with big data. Uh, big data is not a solution for uh, you know every type of problem, and MySQL is awesome. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.